What's up y'all? Welcome to Tabletop Bros. By now you all know that over the last couple of months I've been on a journey to build and paint my Death Watch. What started as a casual Escalation League has turned into much much more. I got to 2000 points but didn't stop there. I spent hundreds of hours building and painting my Black Spear boys and now have almost 4000 points. I've spent thousands of dollars on gray plastic, road trips, plane tickets, and entry fees with hopes to ascend the Death Watch rankings and become the top ranked Death Watch player worldwide. But as you know, disaster strikes. I recently got second place in a local GT with the statistically worst ranked faction in the world, only to have my dreams crushed by Evil Games Workshop. If you've been on YouTube or used the internet in the last few weeks, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Death Watch are dead. But in case you haven't heard, the redacted codex has been confirmed, agents of the Imperium are on the way. Which should be a good thing. An exciting new codex filled with rich lore, new art, detachments, and loads of new rules to bolster the dying Imperium and push back the aliens, the heretics, and bring order to the 41st millennia. But Games Workshop, in all its infinite wisdom, has decided to throw the Death Watch into the book and change the army completely. While we don't yet know all the details of the new detachment options and restrictions, it's very likely the Black Spear detachment will be gone forever, and with it, many of the unique kill team options that make the Death Watch so appealing. But fear not brothers, the God Emperor of Mankind has spoken to me. My Death Watch journey is not over. As a matter of fact, it's only just beginning. With the new rules in 10th edition, any Space Marines can use the Vanilla Detachments from the Codex. So while I may lose access to the Teleportarium, the Sacred Tome of Ectoclades, the Thief of Secrets, and customizable kill teams, the suits at Games Workshop have made a fatal mistake. They have awakened the Golden Throne and unleashed the Mech Watch Death Troll. With the sands of time working against me, I've decided to embrace the changes. Only days away from a local RTT, I've decided to scrap my army and start over. I put pen to paper, let my inner competitor take over, and wrote a list with no kill teams, or Death Watch specific units. I stopped embracing the unique aspects of the army, I returned the legendary enhancements to the reliquary, powered down the teleportarium, and went full vanilla. Before we dive into the army before you and take a look at my new list, Keep in mind the Rogue Trader tournament I'm going to this weekend has no paint score requirements. Alright, so let's take a look at my new 2000 point list. That's right, everything before you comes in to a perfect 2000 points. So the Mech Watch Death Troll. Death Watch 2000 points, and I'm going to be playing the Iron Storm Spearhead Detachment. I thought about some of the other detachments and potential opportunities. Gladius is always a good choice. I considered the Vanguard Spearhead to always have cover and minus one to hit outside 12 inches. A couple of cool strats as well, but decided because it's my first time using the new list, I'll just go with the Iron Storm Spearhead. There's not a ton of useful strats in the list, but the inherent reroll for every time you activate a unit for either one hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll is pretty nice. It's fast, it's simple, it's easy. So I decided I'd go with that. So first we have my Warlord as a captain for 90 points. He's armed with a Mastercrafted Power Weapon, Relic Shield, Heavy Bolt Pistol, and then I've given him the Flesh's Weak Enhancement for 10 points, which gives him a 4-up, feel no pain. Next we have two Tech Marines for 55 points apiece with no enhancements. Each has a Forge Bolter, Grav Pistol, Omniscient Power Axe, and Servo Arm. These guys are going to be attached to a couple of my Assault Intercessor units. I'll be able to heal some stuff, buff the hit roll potentially, but more than anything they're going to be taking advantage of the wound rerolls and their cheap power weapon attacks. And then the benefit of when a vehicle dies within 12 inches of them, their Omnisire Power Axe goes from 4 attacks up to 7, so you should be able to slap a decent amount, especially for only 55 points. Next, I have 6 units of Assault Intercessors. Each one is 5 men for 75 points, it includes a Power Fist and Plasma Pistol on the Sergeant, 4 Chain Swords, 4 Heavy Bolt Pistols, and they have an inherent ability that allows them to reroll wound rolls of 1, or if the enemy is on an objective, I reroll all wound rolls which means that the captain and tech marines while attached to these squads and fighting an enemy on an objective are going to have full wound rerolls. With the Oath of Moment Space Marine ability, I'll be able to choose one target and have full hit rolls against them. And then of course I have the Iron Storm hit wound or damage roll for each squad as well. So my damage output and overall efficiency should be top notch. So it wouldn't be a mechanized list if I didn't have an Impulsor for everybody to ride in. So I have 6 Impulsors, 80 points apiece, each is armed with 2 frags from Grenade Launchers, Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, and the Shield Dome, with the single Impulsor having the Orbital Comms Array instead. The Shield Dome is really nice because it gives them a 5 up and vulnerable save, which is great against high AP shooting or combat attacks, makes them surprisingly durable with a toughness 9 and 11 wounds, but with 6 of them in the army, the Icarus Stubbers could be pretty nice with 8 shots apiece. The missile launcher is pretty versatile with either a D6 shots, a D3 shots, or one big shot, but in the end I decided to keep it simple. One orbital comms array and five shield domes. 
The orbital comms array is nice because anytime I target a unit with a stratagem within six inches of that vehicle, on a five up, I'll gain a command point. And with 10 command points to spend throughout the game, probability is I'll get about three command points back if the orbital comms is alive and nearby. Not to mention the captain has an inherent ability that allows him to use a stratagem for free. So he'll be riding in that vehicle. So once he's on the battlefield, each time I use his free stratagem to target his unit, that's gonna give me another opportunity to gain a command point. Next, we have three predator destructors armed identically for 130 points each. Each has a predator auto cannon, two last cannons, a storm bolter, and a hunter killer missile. These things actually dish out quite a bit of firepower. I usually pop off the two last cannons and hunter killer missile at the first chance I get at a big target. For two strength 12 minus three AP D6 plus one damage shots, one strength 14 minus three AP D6 damage shot, and iron storm rerolls, I should be able to dish out quite a bit of firepower with these. The predator auto cannon is really nice. At 48 inches, it's strength nine minus one AP and three damage but it's also rapid fire. So if I'm shooting at something 24 inches away, I gain an additional two shots for six total. And if I'm firing at infantry, I gain an additional minus one AP. So with a move of 10, it's not crazy to think you can get these things 24 inches away from your enemy, shoot them at some heavy infantry and pop off with six auto cannon shots with minus two AP and three damage, which is pretty freaking good. And next to finish off the list, we have three gladiator lancers. 160 points each, armed with a lancer laser destroyer, two fragstorm grenade launchers, iron hail heavy stubber, and Icarus rocket pod. The beauty of the gladiator lancers is they have a built-in reroll for one hit, one wound, and one damage per activation. In addition to the iron storm rerolls and oath of moment rerolls, these things are extremely reliable and massive damage dealers. At 72 inch range, strength 14, minus four AP, and a D6 plus three damage each. On average, it only takes about two or three shots to fell most vehicles or monsters. And because I have three of them alongside the predators, I should have absolutely no problem felling anything in the game. So the beauty of the mechanized list and why I expect it to do well is all my light targets, all the juicy stuff, starts off the game inside of vehicles. This is particularly efficient against light arms fire or close combat armies as they'll have to crack open the transport, which can be difficult, especially with the shield domes, to get to the juicy targets inside. Each of the assault intercessors is OC2 and battle line, which gives some benefits in the current meta. With the Pariah Nexus mission deck offering some bonus to battle line units, I should be able to outshoot just about any other army in the game. And with a total of 12 tanks, six transports, and six battle tanks, 30 battle line infantry, and three decent characters with full rerolls to wound on objectives, there's not much out there I shouldn't be able to deal with. So tomorrow is gonna be my first time running this list. I grabbed up some Space Marines from my various armies, slapped together six Impulsors, and tomorrow I'm gonna to put this thing to the test. I'm really looking forward to playing with it. I think it should do pretty good overall. The key thing I focus on in this army is the actions and scoring. I find that in general, most people are gonna have somewhere between nine and 12 units to do stuff with once they attach their characters. Assuming all my characters are attached to a squad of Assault Intercessors, I'm gonna have 18 units, which means I should have no problem getting to objective edges, the center of the battlefield, standing on points with my OC bodies. I should have absolutely no issue killing stuff plenty of units to do actions. And overall, I suspect this army is gonna be extremely potent at board control. It's gonna be very difficult for my opponent to deep strike anything in, as I'll keep everything spaced out to leave no real bubbles for them to arrive. First turn, I plan to zoom forward all of the impulsors to secure the midboard early. And every time one gets popped, I'm gonna have 10 OC getting out on an objective. I focus more than anything on scoring with this list. I think it's gonna be extremely efficient at that, as I find that typically when I have big squads of like three or 400 point units, I end up having to take like weak little units that are cheap to do actions with. And later on in the game, every time one of those assets is deleted, you really start feeling it, as the last thing you wanna be doing is an action with a big kill team or a terminator brick. So in this case, I can be doing those actions with my vehicles. I can be getting into various table quarters, putting lots of bodies and OC on objectives. And I do expect to have some extremely high scoring games. So that being said, I will let you guys know how it goes. It's only gonna be three games, but it's gonna be a nice day. They go by quick. I'll get to put in some reps against some various different armies. It's a fairly competitive meta with lots of good players. And I do expect to do well. 
So if you enjoyed today's video and taking a look at my new mechanized Space Marine list, which is 100% Death Watch, hopefully by now Tabletop Bros has earned your subscription. And depending on how things go, maybe the next time you see this army, it'll be fully painted up in the Death Watch colors. So wish me luck and understand that no matter what Games Workshop throws at me, no matter how many times they knock me down, I'm always going to be getting back up and fighting. Well, I guess that's it from the Tabletop Bros. Later!